Welcome to this Ash Wednesday Chapel. My name is John Sorum. I'm Dean of Academic Affairs at the Institute of Lutheran Theology. I'm very happy to be with you today as we begin this 40 days together of renewal in our faith of going through the narrow door. Our worship today begins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading today is from Luke, the 13th chapter. Jesus went through one town and village after another, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. When once the owner of the house has got up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Lord, open to us. Then in reply, he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I do not know where you come from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrown out. Then people will come from east and west, from north and south and will eat in the kingdom of God. Indeed, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last the Gospel of the Lord. Strive to enter by the narrow door. Jesus sets a narrow door in front of us and we have to go through it. It's the only way. And Jesus tells us that many are not going to be able to get through that door. What about us? What about you? Now we can go on and on and on through our lives without going through the narrow door. We can put it off, we can put it out of our mind, maybe even not realize that that door is there. We might be good church people. We could be like those people who will say, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. Well, maybe Jesus didn't teach in our streets, but he certainly taught in our church. And we've heard him and listened to him as we've gone to church, gone to worship, when uh, we've gone to Sunday school and confirmation, maybe we've continued to go to Bible studies. Some of us have had Jesus around all of our lives, so we're sure that we know him and everything is fine between us but we don't go through the narrow door. We might do quite a lot for Jesus, volunteer in our church, give generously, go on mission trips. We may even be passionate about our church and love it, but we don't go through the narrow door. We might be generally good people, good parents, good neighbors, good friends. We may work hard and live honest and upright lives, but not go through the narrow door. We not, might even be good theologians. Since we're at our leisure and uh, we are all assured that we're in, we could indulge in some theological debate. Maybe we could ask, like uh, Jesus was asked, um, will only a few be saved or will a many be saved or all be saved? And some of us might come down on one side and say, oh no, only a few will be saved. And others might come down on the other side and say, well, 
just about everybody or perhaps everybody will be saved. You know, love wins. We might be passionate about our views. We might take theology really seriously. Maybe we have even really good theology and we're willing to sacrifice quite a lot in order to stand up for that good theology, but never go through the narrow door. And so it goes. We glide on through life. We get by day by day. Somehow we forge on, but don't go through the narrow door. But the time will come when the Lord will shut the door. At some point, the Lord is going to say, well, time's up. That's it. And slam the door shut forever. And then the final judgment will be upon us. That time of judgment is coming. This world as it is isn't going to go on and on forever and ever. Only a certain length of time is set for this age. We don't know how long that is. Even Jesus himself said he didn't know only his Father in heaven. But even if we don't know exactly when it's coming, we know that it is coming, and maybe soon, maybe tomorrow, maybe today, and then it will be all over, and it will be too late for anything to change. God's patience will not last forever. God isn't going to allow the evil of this world to go on and on forever. He's going to bring a full end to it. He's going to bring judgment. He's going to get up and he's going to shut the door. And that'll be it. And then some will be inside and some will be out. And there will be no appeal. God is in total control of this, not we ourselves. No matter what we think or do, when God wants to, he's going to get up and shut the door. So for all of us, the time is short, perhaps very short, before the door is shut. And if the door is shut and we're on the other side, out on the outside, there will be hell to pay. The door will be shut fast, tight, with no hope of it opening again, and then we would find ourselves left out. Then Jesus says, you will begin to say, uh, you'll begin to stand outside and to knock at the door and say, Lord, open to us. And in reply, he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Now think about that for a minute, to hear the Lord say, I do not know where you come from. Well, we came from him. He's our creator. And to have our creator say, I do not know where you come from, is the most horrible thing. It's so horrible that none of us here can really even imagine what it must be like or what it would be like to hear that from our God. And when we protest and say, but, but I went to church to hear you and listen to your words and I've known you all my life, then he says it again, I do not know where you come from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. To hear yourself doubly disowned and cast out forever, that is hell. And then when you see all sorts of people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets and people coming from all over, from east and west and north and south, and they are included, they are inside, they are part of the celebration that's starting, and you yourself left out. That is hell. No wonder Jesus says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The horror is something that none of us None of us can even begin to grasp. None of us. So before it's too late, enter the narrow door. Deny yourself, 
take up your cross and follow Jesus. Lose yourself and gain him. You see, entering through the narrow door means leaving everything in order to have Jesus. Those first disciples left their nets and their families and their boats and everything that they had in order to follow him when Jesus called them. And we too hear him today. He says, follow me. He says, follow me moment by moment so that we turn away from all else in order to have him alone so that we enter by the narrow door. But you see, that door is not empty. Jesus is standing in that door. He himself has passed through it. Jesus is there. He is peace. He is the one who has won the victory for you. He is full and free pardon for all of your sins. He is the one who was raised from the dead and gives you a share in his resurrection. He is the beloved son, the chosen one, the one who is in charge of all of God's future. He is the Lord of the house, the host of the great feast. Follow me, he says. Imagine you get to be part of him. You get to have him and all that he has won for you. And you are restored to your Father, to your Creator, to live in loving trust with Him now and forever. And you are acknowledged as His because Jesus befriended you and went to a cross for your sake. So He certainly does know where you come from. You come from Jesus and belong in Him. So turn away from life as usual. Put to death the impulses of the flesh and the pride of your spirit. Forsake all your precious idols. Turn from everything you depend on. Leave behind all security and run through the narrow door. Who cares what you lose? What is that compared to what you gain? You gain Jesus and in him everything. You share in the joy, the eternal joy. You get to be there with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the prophets, and all who come from east and west and north and south and share in the joy. But you're going to have to fight your way in. Jesus says, strive to enter through the narrow door. Going through that door is a continuous struggle. We face formidable enemies who don't want us to enter by the narrow door. First, there is the evil one, that liar and murderer. He knows a million strategies to divert you from the narrow door. He knows all your weaknesses and is pitiless in exploiting them. He works furiously, and he never rests, he never sleeps. And then the world at large is not happy at all to see you go through that narrow door because people feel threatened. When you turn your back on everything that they trust in and go after Jesus, they feel that you are a traitor to the human race. And they will turn on you with fury. And then, of course, each of us has the traitor within. The flesh hates going through that narrow door. What? Lose everything? Have Jesus only? Impossible. Yeah, we have a fight on our hands. So Jesus says, strive to enter by the narrow door. Jesus says many lose that fight and are not able to enter. And we will lose too. We will certainly lose unless we cry out to our Heavenly Father for help. We can't stand against such enemies. 
We would surely be pushed far from the door and go off wandering in the wilderness and fall asleep somewhere until it was too late, unless we have help. But as soon as we cry out, wrestling in prayer, then help comes. And we are safely through with Jesus, the Lord of the house. Of course, those enemies don't give up and they drag us out again and we wander. And if we falter in prayer and look to our own strength, we're going to be defeated and remain languishing outside the door. So we need to be alert and we need to keep on striving, keep on struggling, keep on fighting to enter through the narrow door. And if you fall, get up and strive to enter the narrow door again. And if you fall, then get up again and strive to enter through the narrow door. And when you fall again, get up again and strive to enter through the narrow door. Strive to enter through the narrow door. Carry on the struggle with the weapons of the Spirit. Pray constantly. Hold fast to the word of promise. Listen to the voice of Jesus and follow him. A great day is coming. And when that door is shut, think of it, we will be shut off forever from our enemies, from the evil one from the world, the spirit of this world, and from our own sin, and from death itself. And we will be utterly, completely, fully, and finally free. And all that will be left for us will be Jesus, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets, and all who came from east and west, and north and south, and a new creation, and the joy that never ends. Amen. As we enter into the struggle, as we strive to enter through the narrow door, our prayer this, today is Psalm 51. Let's bow our heads and pray. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from all my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, and so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Let me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.